Hey everyone, Kyle once again. Welcome back to another movie review. And this one, now this film I wanted to review uh, for this month. <clears throat> that, um, well, technically it's not really a movie, it was a, it's a uh, mini series. But, you know, because it was split, it's, you know, part one, part two. But, but it's for a tele television movie. Didn't really, doesn't really matter though. But I, I, um, um, growing up, I, I grew up, um, remember growing up, growing up watching this film. I used to come often, you know, star, um, play premiere on Sci-Fi when Sci-Fi was good. When Sci-Fi was good. And me and my, me and my, uh, my dad used to watch it all the time together. And I always wanted to, uh, always look forward to uh, seeing it again and again, because I always thought it was a, a fun, though. But, now I'm getting to Peter, uh, and it's also, it's based on a novel by Peter Benchley, who was the, who was the, the author of Jaws. So, this time I'm getting to Peter Benchley's The Beast. Based on the based on the book, which I which I on that pa on packaging video, I got the book right here. Large big book. P the late Peter Benchley. And and from the time I got from since I since the time I got this from the, I got this book from the um after that on packaging video and since then I read on I started reading the book and I have read the book now. It's been like well, I think it's been like over a month. I think it was since I got the book, and I read it beginning to end, and I, 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 I enjoy the book. I like the book, and as I as I and and as I was and as I was reading, I was um as I was reading, I was um no um noticing the difference of reading the differences as I was going along, the differences between this book and the television film. As I was reading it, I don't know if there was differences, but I don't want to try to explain. I Maybe mean, I'll explain a few differences here and there, but I don't want to explain everything. What was different from that to the film? But here's the book. And getting into um, the uh, first of all, I want to say from this uh, this cover, I would say it's not it's not a good looking cover. I would still prefer um, the, an old. Um, on the old VHS, but um, this is not this. I wish I wish I wish you could see the. I wish I had the cover from the old VHS though. But this is the not this is a not good looking cover. But um, but then the film it star it stars William Peterson from from the original CSI, <clears throat> and um, also uh, Manhunter. And uh, with his, with, um, William Pearson, I've always always enjoyed as an actor, and he's definitely one of the definitely um, a, 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 one of the big uh, reasons why I, like, I enjoy the film. But William, William Pearson did a good job, and it stars also a uh, Charles Martin Smith, who I remember from starring in The Untouchables, and of course as a director, he directed the first Air Bud movie, which I re which I already reviewed. And he directed um, Dolphin Tale one and two. He plays Skylar Graves, which he's the asshole harbor master guy. Which that which I say that name is not in the book. Um, and, so, and uh, Larry Drake from Dark Man One and Two, Dark Man. He was um, oh what was that? I forgot. I forget. The, uh, Durant. They give that character Durant from Dark Man One and Two, Larry Drake. Uh, star also a uh, Karen Silas. Which I think she was in the film uh, Wanted, I think it was. And also forgot to mention Charles Martin Smith. He was also in also that's also a sci-fi miniseries called um, The Triangle. 
which starred Eric Stoltz and um, Sam Neill and Lou Diamond Phillips. Forgot to mention that one. So, the cast, uh, the, uh, William Pearson and the rest of the cast, I thought was pretty uh, decent. I always thought they were very decent. Even watching back in the day, I always thought they were pretty decent. And... Of course, in the film, of course, the story is, of course, from, from, of course, from the book, you can obviously from the, see from the title, the, the image of the book, it's about a giant squid. And the opening, uh, now the opening of the film, which is like the opening of the book, has this uh, couple, uh, the Griffins, they're on, they're on a boat, and there the night there is something, something in their engine gets messed up and then it starts water starts to leak in. Um, uh, sink, sink. They eventually the boat sinks and they get into a life. They get into a life raft. They um, turn on this up signal. You know they'll signal the coast guard to save them. But then um, as the husband uh, turns away, his wife disappears right next to him. And then he then he gets killed, which we all know what what does it. And then, because, you know, the next day that, um, William Pearson as Whip Dalton, although the last name was different, it was Darling. Whip Darling, but here it's Whip Dalton. He's, he's, he's a fisherman with his, uh, friend, um, Mike. And the Coast Guard, he sees the, the, hel the Coast Guard helicopter, uh, fly by, and they're heading towards the, the, ra the life raft, so they go and pick it up on their boat. And some of the dialogue I thought was a little, was a little references to the book as well, you know. You know, do you think, you think sharks got them? No, if it wasn't, there would be bite marks on the cells of the boat. And, or maybe they got rescued, and no one, and no one bothered to turn off the, the signal. Um. And, or, or... Or so what happened is they probably took a, a life raft and it flew, drifted away before they got into it. And of course, also the other thing, and, uh, and also they uh, find the, the smell of ammonia. And and also uh, the um, Graves assistant uh, Jameson, a couple of our patrolmen, they wanted to claim on the uh, the boat because. Um, Skylar Gray is ordered ordered it to, and I, and I like this. I like and I like the scene where um, I like the scene where um, which is although Lee was also in the book as well, from what I read, that uh, Whip and Mike they um, uh, they deliberately uh, they deliberately def deliberately deflate the boat by stabbing it with hook with hooks and stuff you know, and he's like come on Mike I don't want to do this on my own they just go stabbing it ripping it into the boat deflating it. And then when they didn't know a claw falls a claw falls out. Gives it, they give the guys the bow and they drive away and um as the rest leaves, um uh whip. He finds he finds the claw, it still has the small smell of ammonia. And then times and then from time to time, you know, for the film you see from the squid's point of view where it's uh swim in underwater. And 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 also with uh, his friend uh, uh whips a friend uh Mike he um his wife's pregnant and uh, they're having a little bit of um financial problems like um they don't have like they they're just des uh, desperate need of money you don't have that much money so and what um whip Tef, uh takes uh, takes the claw and gives it to um person who sent it to a zoo and in the zoo. Gives it to a marine bi marine biologist Herbert Talley, which is also who's in the book, who is a marine bi biologist. So that gets sent to him. And while that on another day when um, uh, Whip and Mike are out fishing again, they see um, he sees um, Lucas Calvin, played by Larry Drake. He sees him point. They see him pulling out a buoy, and. Um, they 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 go right right behind him. He's like, um, he's asking him, "Who's Bowie?" Oh no, no, I just ran across it myself. There weren't there weren't any traps attached to it. Uh, no, there's no traps. You know you know something, Lucas? You don't lie very good. And um, 
Wim Pearson tries to get a little closer, try to hit his boat, you know, to scare him off. Wim Pearson, I always thought, I, I, is a good actor, and I always enjoyed him as an actor, and he was definitely one of my favorite things in the movie. So, so him and Mike pull up, he's like, traps my ass, uh, um, let's see how many fish the, the bastard caught. And as they, they they pull up a, one of the cables and look and they look at it, it's like, what did that? Looks like it was busted. Busted. These are factory tight. If it was busted, the frames would, the uh, the strings would be all fri uh, the fran the they'd be all frizzy, you know. And and then they pull up more and then they find the and they said, looks like it was bit. Mike's like, uh, nothing nothing down there. There's nothing down there that can bite through steel. And they pull up the trap and it's all. And it's all mess, it's all been destroyed. Uh, and then, and then, uh, then another day when he was, he's, he's talking to uh, Graves, Charles Martin Smith. Um, he has like stuff. Uh, he has like stuff plans, and um, William Pearson does not like that. And I, 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 like, I just like this conversation they both have in the scene. And it's like, um, and uh, Charles Martin Smith is like, uh, Charles Martin Smith is like, what? Wait, do you expect me to go? Uh, expect me, uh, expect me to go broke and uh, expect me to drop like to drop out of grammar school and go broke just like you did? Because um, I guess they 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 knew they knew each other back then in grammar school. So and then it's like they knew each other back then. And it's like when Pierce is like, oh please, Graves, your family, you and your family couldn't go broke if if you tried. And you know, I want you to remember how um how all the little kids in the school on the playground always were always trying to beat you up. You wouldn't be alive today if this poor dumb fisherman was every there every day to save your ass. Well, we're not in grammar school, Dalton. You're right, you're right, Graves. We're not. But you still are the same little creep you always were. And it makes me sick to what you were doing to our island. I, I, I just like I just, I just like the, the line that, that William Pearson said to him. He's like, this poor dumb fisherman was ever there every day to save your ass. <laughs> Wim, as I said before, Wim Pearson, he's definitely he's definitely one of the uh definitely the things that I, I enjoy about this film. If you can see him right there. Yeah. I always enjoy him as an actor. He's definitely why I like about the film. So he so he gets home and his daughter, um, Dana and a friend a friend of hers are talking to two guys, they're di they're um divers and uh, they wanna pay him to take him out to um there they they explore they, they're the divers that explore uh, shipwrecks, and they want to pay him money to uh, take him to this uh, out, uh, to a to a, a shipwreck, a wrecked ship called the Admiral Admiral Burden, Burnham, which is a very deep dive, and um, he they're willing to pay him money, and he's, he generously declines, and he says no. Um, he says, look, we have very fine wrecks here in Graves Point. Um, can't name those other ships, but um, they're good 40, 50 foot dives. I'll be happy to take any one of them at a fair rate, but I'm not going to take you to the Admiral Burnham. I'm sorry. And uh, Dana gets a little mad at that because because they like offered a, offered like a thousand dollars, and she's like, you know, last time I checked, we could have used a thousand dollars, and he goes like, that would have been blood money. That those kids are way over their heads. <laughs> So then the two divers they go they turn to Lucas who also knows the, knows uh, where the Burnham is, so he takes them to that. So he takes he takes, he takes them where it is because there's this like there's a large buoy that they with the bell it rings because the buoy line goes all the way straight down to where the Burnham is. And while that's and while that's going on, um, um, uh. Well, before the divers Ted they go there, uh, Whip takes um, uh, what was the the the, the harbor the harbor, one of the helicopter pilots um, uh, where is her name? Uh, Lieutenant Catherine Marcus, played by Karen Silas. They 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 they're, they're, they're dive in, and uh, like they, one of them drops a flashlight and sinks all the way down to the to the bottom, and you see something move, which is the squid. And then her uh, whip's daughter and her friend they jump in for a little swim. Then they get then they get out. And then the as um, whip pulls up pulls up the anchor. The the one of the one of his ten the squid's tentacles grab onto the anchor and starts pulling it down. Whip starts pulling it back up. And then they see something as it comes up, but it lets go. And you see like as the um, in front of, in front of the camera the like the squid's like swims away like this. 
pulling back. And then when when he gets home, he gets he finds a package from Herbert Tally. In which there's a scene where he's on his on his uh, boat and his assistant uh, Christopher gives him the claw. He's like, "Do you know what this is?" Where, where, where he finds out where he got. He's like, "Do you want, do you know what it is?" Yep, Arcatuthus ducks. They got themselves a giant squid. <laughs> so then he gets the he sends him a package about what about the about the squid? A tape of talking about um, uh, squid and um, other stuff. And while that's going on. Um, Mike and his wife are walking on the beach, and um, they find remains of a uh, of a whale, sperm whale, which is um, Henry Weezer who literally finds pieces of it. And is like, um, Mike goes, "What the hell? What the hell attacks a whale?" In which, from what I read in the book, there were there was an there was an adult female whale, a sperm whale, with a uh, its baby. And it goes into a it goes into a dive, and then the um, the giant squid attacks the baby, and the mother was forced to abandon it, and it killed uh, the baby whale. So yeah, it's supposed to be a reference to from the book is it killed a because even uh, William Pierce said it's a young whale that it killed, it doesn't have its full reign of fat. So yeah, it's supposed to be a reference from the book is it kills a young whale, so which it does in this in this film, it shows pieces of it. Um, so, they're back with them. Lucas taking the divers to the Admiral Burnham. They, uh, they go down there. One of them, one of them goes down first. And they see, they sees the wreck, uh, and, he's, and he's filming it from a camera. And then the squid li is lying there. And then it moves and attacks, the, and it attacks, it grabs, one of, the, grabs um, one of the divers, pulls him down. And they to this, like, reddish brown dust, underwater dust. Then it grabs the other diver who's trying to see and climbs back up though, but he gets dragged down, dead. And then Lucas sees the blood in the water. He goes and drives away. And so as the buoy thing sinks, step back, uh, the large buoy sinks down and comes back up. Then uh, Mike, uh, 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 Whip and Mike, you see the helicopter, the Coast Guard helicopter go over there, and. While they're diving down there searching for stuff, um, he, he um, Whip goes yells, "Get out of the, get out of the water! It might still be down there. Get out of the water!" So then they get where, where the remains of the divers were on the beach and has is covered in ammonia. And um, uh, later and then later in the night they have a town meeting, where Whip is explaining everything about the giant squid. And. He says he says that his best suggestion is to leave it alone. It's, it's just passing by. He'll eventually move on. And of course, Lucas he says I I I got a better way. We we should kill the thing. Well, make some depth charges and blow the thing out of the water. And uh, and I like um what uh, Will, uh, William Pearson says. He was like, okay, Lucas, you go and try and kill the squid. Just 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 to remember, this thing has has eight arms. Well. Besides his eight, besides his eight arms, this thing has two whips. It is as like three inches thick and is about as long as long as this room. The squid, the squid's it, its tentacles is covered with suction cups the size of his notebook, and each one of those in the center of those suction cups is a claw as big as my fist and razor sharp. It's it's it's, and then it's, then grand and. Then, it tentacles grabs his prey, sh shredding the flesh, and shredding the flesh, and hits right towards his beak. And this thing can shred a hundred-pound tuna in five seconds. The squid, it's the squid's beak. It's like an eagle's, but fifty times bigger, and and can bite through steel. And it killed a sperm whale too. And you, and you better pray that those those tentacles quit kill you before it gets you, before you reach that beak. I was always like that it was a. A good line they said, you know, but about the the squid. So after that, you know, he talk, uh Lucas talks to uh, Skyler that he agrees we should go and kill it. So he, um, well before well before that before he does before he does that, um, there there there's this a uh, part there's this party of the, like the annual Grace Point party. And everyone, everybody's there, and 
And then there was a scene where this um, dog, this family leaves in the truck and is tied up. And he hears something in the water, starts barking at it. You know, he, which, one thing I forgot, what, how this, how this um, dog, how it, it's tied up though, but as soon as it jumps out the truck, it looks like the rope was already cut. You know, or chewed off. But, that's this is a little nitpick though, but. It goes onto the dock, and it sees the squid, and it jumps into the water, and here you hear the squid screech, and then the dog whines, and then the next scene where the family sees that the dog's not on the truck, find him underneath the truck, he's all wet, and uh, this scene, I always, this scene, looking at this scene where I always felt, uh, every time I look at this, I always felt sorry for the dog, because next thing when he sees the, the dog underneath the truck, all dirty and wet though, and you see the look in its eyes as it was just, the dog was just scared out of its mind. By just looking at it, it says, and then just goes and lies back down. But it was, by looking into it, the, the dog's eyes, it was scared out of its mind. Every time I have third time that, I, I, I watched that scene, I always felt sorry for the dog. The dog didn't die, so I was happy about that. So the dog didn't die, but it got, but it got scared out of its mind. So then, then the, um, next is Lucas and, um, his, his uh, like crew or people, they went down to hunt the squid. They said there was some bait out, you know, and they they had like a you know the thing that that sense of coming. They so they throw some depth charges to blow the wa blow the waters, and the thing rises to the surface, like has like a hole blown out, like a chunk of it blown out of it. It's dead, so they hook it up to the boat and they say take and. They head back to the part with the squid on, which you find out that they killed what it was a it was a baby squid, and you see that the the mother uh, grab onto the hop onto that that large buoy the ring the with the bell, and then that's the and that makes it that makes it the um the end of part one, which this is which this is a two disc so the two disc is this really is. Just, the first disc is part one. The second disc is part two. Um, so that was that was the end of part one. And like I said this is a, this was a mini series. So so this was on for this is the, how long this film is. So this combined total with part one, and part two, it's 180 minutes or 100 or or 100 or 176 minutes. So it's over. It's over. It's, it's two hours and. Two hours and it's a it's a it's an it's almost it's almost a three it's an almost it's almost a three hour movie. But then but that was in part one, part two. Um, uh, Whip and uh, Doctor Tally they say they want to look at um, the remains of uh, of the of the squid and um, Skyler, you know he sold it. To a guy named Osborne Manny of Sealand, Texas, which Osborne Manny is another character in the in the book. But um, he is a millionaire. But for whatever reason, though, he he had like two kids that was killed by a squid, and he wanted to get revenge on it. So, but that was in the book, though. But in this, so he's he's an owner. He he, he which he is a millionaire. But um, <laughs> he so so he bought the the remains of the squid from Skylar and and and. Which though I would have another line that um, Whip says after Scar says this, says, wherever a uh, local resident of Grace Point goes to see in Texas gets a free pass, and and then when then um, Whip goes and leaves the building saying, I want to wring that little jerk's neck. So they so they want to um, explore the, um, the 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 squid's habitat, which is where the Admiral Burnham is, and while that um, while that's going, on, you see that. Um, Whip's uh, daughter Dana has like fallen in love with um, Dr. Talley's assistant Christopher, so um, they plan to do take a, a mini sub with a Christopher, another guy who's driving the thing, and um, uh, Gray's assistant Jameson down to see the the Burnham. So they take the mini sub down. They go, to, they see the Burnham, and um, Dr. Talley says, "You know, like this is very strange. The 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 the, the, the ocean should be teeming with fish at that depth." The, the ocean should be alive with fish, so they're gonna they're gonna they're gonna head back to the surface until on the the video monitor Whip sees the squid. He's just there, and they they all see it where it is. It's like my God, 
they try to warn them, but then the thing attacks the sub. And which the one thing I think I appreciate with the, with the, with this that ninety nine percent I would say the squids were practical models, the baby and the adult mother squid. The 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 effects of the squids were really well done, which I appreciated. You know, for a large squid and such, and for a baby squid. The effects of the squids are well done. There was a little bit of a C, little bit of a use of CG, which I'll, which well, it was hard to use, you all used to use, um, see though. But there was one point that was the, the CG was a little bit, uh, you know, by which I'll I'll explain later. So it attacks the Mesa. Um, they lose the vision, the vision of the camera side drags all the way down, uh, killing the three people inside, and then. Uh, William, William Pearson takes that tape from that video monitor, gives it to Skyler, and says, This is for you. What is it? If you were showing us the squid, you idiot, we would know it was the wrong one. We have evidence of the size. We know how big it was supposed to get. What are you talking about? You know, what are you talking about? I hold you responsible for what happened today. What happened? He's, he's saying. It's all, a, it's all a tape, Skyler. It's all, it's all in there. Take a good look at it. Take a good look at the terror in Jameson's eyes the second before he dies. And then, uh, and then, uh, uh, Whip's, da Whip's uh, daughter is also upset because Christopher is dead. Um, then, then next scene, um, uh, uh, Graves is talking with Lucas. You know, he can go to go back out there to kill the squid. It's like, you know, well, he's like, well, where, where he's like, bigger squid costs more to kill. I'll pay for extra manpower, wherever it takes. But you're bound to our original agreement. You killed the wrong squid. Now wait just a damn minute! No, no, no! You, you go back there and you'll finish what you started, or I'm gonna confiscate your boat! Wait, well, you can't do that! You've been trap fishing, Lucas! You know what the penalty is! No, 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 I've not been trap fishing! You don't, you go faith there, I'll shut, I'll shut, I'll, I'll shut, I can shut your whole goddamn business down if I want to! So he, so he, so he agrees to go back out there. But, um, since then, the no one, no way's ever, no one's gonna help Lucas to go back out there. Because they know this is a bigger squid, so they're not gonna go back out there. Except um, Mike, um, one of the guys is gonna go with Lucas. Then Mike, um, he's gonna help out because he needs the money. Because uh, he has basically has uh, has like no more money left to go, and he doesn't want to tell his wife. But he need, but he need, but he needs the money, so he decides to go out there and help Lucas. So, and then. So, so, so as they're out there, they you know do try to use the same technique as last time, but then, and then it's all raining. Whip finds out that Mike is out there with Lucas, so he takes his bow and tries to find him. And then when it's nighttime, it's raining, and they were gonna plan to head back because something's happening. But then, of course, the the, the squid attacks it, kill kills one guy, grabs it with his tentacle and drags it down to the water. Um. Mike gets caught in this net and he falls out, but the, the, the squid knocks his metal rod and uh, smashes um, one of uh, uh, Mike's legs. One scene where um, Lucas is in his um, cabin and then, or whatever, then the motorcycle smashes through the window and then it grabs a hold of the whole entire boat and the squid's beak bites into the boat, creating, um, leak, creating a big hole and just spinning the whole boat around, dragging it all the way down into the water, Lucas drowns in it. Uh, Mike is still alive. He's on the buoy thing, uh, which um, Whip finds. He finds him, so he's in the hospital. He's gonna be fine, and he's gonna be fine. And but he's very, but he's badly injured. So then Whip gets uh, goes and gets drunk because his friend almost died. So he goes and gets drunk. And then when the next, the same where I went at night time where. Is this couple, this young woman, goes and wants to go down there and look at the baby, the dead baby squid. She wants to touch it. Then um, the mother finds it and tries to grab the, tries to take the baby with it, but it can't. And this is where I, this is a little bit. Um, you see a wide shot of the of the mother squid on the shore with its baby, trying to get its baby. When they, with a, we see that wide wide um, shot of it, the the, the CG. Of the of the mother squid is not the best. If you if you know what I'm talking about though, he sees a white shot of the squid on the shore, or trying to get its baby with it. The white shot of it, the CG is not the best though, but 
it's only for a couple seconds. For the most entire movie, though, the squids are were practical and look well done, though. But that one little scene for like five seconds, the CG was not the, was not the best of it, though. But so then they tried they all ever ever wanted they go to Whip's house and they wanted to him to go out there and um, stop it. He says no, we should leave it alone still. But, but, but eventually, uh, Whip decide, decides he he will do it um, under these under conditions. He's gonna he'll use his boat and Skylar Graves comes with him. So that they they have a plan to lure the mother with this uh, thing that looks like a squid, but has filled with something I forget what it is. And then Osborne is gonna shoot it with cyanide to kill it. But he but he did but he doesn't he. Switches it out for a tranquilizer to knock it out. So they use the boat. So um, Tally's going with them, um, Graves, Man Osborne, Manning, and um, uh, Catherine's going with them. So they all so they all head out in this boat and they all drive out there. They're just gonna keep on driving until it shows up. And when the night when night comes. The, the thing grab, takes up the, the the squid takes the bait, and they reel it up to the surface. Um, Osborne shoots at it, and you see the, the squid's eye go all the way up, thinking that it's dead. So then they try to they hit they they head back with the thing, drag it behind it, but then they blow up the, the the engine blows out, or breakdown, whatever it is, blow, the engine blows out, whatever. And Osmore says, um, oh, we can't, um, they can't wait because it's not dead. So he tells, so it's, it's, sed it's sedated. I tranquilized it. So, because he says he wants to take it back to Sealand, Texas, and wants to put it on display. <laughs> of course. That's like a not typical thing that happens when, but eventually, when with a dangerous animal, they want to put it on display, and how does that thing turn out? So you hear that kind of thing. All to all times in monster films, though, but um, so I think of course the Gray's acting like the coward he is. He gets in like a spare life raft and drives off. The thing wakes up and because they cut it loose, it, it attacks uh, it attacks Grace, but he gets killed off screen. And then, of course, this is of course this was a dumb thing. Of course, back on the um, Whip's boat, which is the uh, the privateer, which is the name of his boat in the book as well, the privateer. Um, they're 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 sitting there waiting, and Osborne Manning, you know how many times did that um, thing could just reach up and grab a person while they're sitting on the side? Would best to do it inside the 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 boat, but he just sit, he just sits on the edge, of course. Of course, he would. Like I say, of course, he would say if if if, 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 a, if a large squid can just reach out and grab somebody, it's not a bit. It's not the wise choice to sit out the ed, on the edge of the boat. But I guess I guess I kind of forgot about that though. But so the thing reaches up and grabs um, Manning, drags him to the water. Then the thing just goes and jumps onto onto the boat, which is kind of like um, I would from how it happened. It kind of looked like. Uh, and it kind of looked like a similarity to Jaws because the tenant, because how the how the gray white in Jaws, how it jumped on top of the of the boat, and as um, Quint fell fell slid, slid down, and got eaten by the by the shark. It's almost basically like the same thing here because the thing, the squid jumps on top of the boat, and then it grabs one of the ten, it grabs um Tally, with its tentacles. And Whip tried to save him, but he couldn't, and then. He get, Whip gets um I don't know Tally he gets he's, he's like he's grabbed by the tentacles and he gets dragged to his death towards he gets eaten um he gets to, he gets dragged towards uh, the its beak drags him towards that you can see from the outside it, it doesn't show him get eaten though but it shows the outside wide shot of the squid as he gets to, dragged towards so it's like a little similarity to Jaws there so uh. Uh, Whip gets an axe, cuts um, up, open up the gas drums, dumping the gasoline. Uh, Catherine shoots a uh, shoots a flare gun, which is to signal the Coast Guard because they signal the Coast Guard. So uh, Catherine shoots a flare, like 
well, first, uh, uh, Whip gets uh, gets grabbed by the leg by one of the tentacles. He's tell he's yelling at her, "Shoot the flare! Shoot the flare!" So he shoots at where the gasoline is, and he gets free by using the axe to hit the tentacle. And he goes up to climbs up the the, the safety ladder. The blow, um, the ship blows up with him seeing, still uh, climbing on the ladder. Then one jump goes towards the squid blowing it up and the boat but and that's it and then it ends with a, with um Dana waiting outside as the helicopter drops him off in front of, a, uh, of his house so Peter eventually is the beast I always enjoyed the film even growing up watching on the sci-fi channel with me and my dad I always enjoyed Peter eventually the beast William Peterson did a really good job as Whip Dalton I always enjoyed him as an actor as well but it's always it's always been my always my um I, I, I like him in I like him in Manhunter. Um, I always enjoyed him in Manhunter, but I always always thought this was, this is my uh, favorite my favorite uh, performance. Well, of course I like him in C, of course in CSI as well, but this has always been my, like my favorite performance of Will, by William Peterson, him versus the giant squid. I was it's always been my favorite performance from. But it's because I grew up while watching this show before before I know uh, other things that William Peterson starred in. But I have to say it though, it's been my favorite performance from by William Peterson. He always, he always did a really good job. The other cast members: Larry Drake as Lucas, Charles Martin Smith as Skylar Graves, Karen Silas as Lieutenant Catherine uh, Marcus. Um, the other other characters: uh. Uh, Ronald Gutman as uh, Dr. Tally, uh, Dennis Ardent as Osborne Manning, Sterling Maester Jr. as Mike. The cast, the supporting cast was de was uh, w was pretty decent. William Pearson was definitely the highlight of the cast for me. The special effects of the of the squid well were very well done. Practical. Most of 99% of it was practical. I always enjoyed the look of the the squid. Like I said before, that one scene where the white shot the mother squid trying to get its baby once on the shore. That CG left for like five seconds was not that was not that great though. But for the most part, the effects of the squid were well done, practical. Um. Um. But I I I, I always I always enjoyed it. I always enjoy Peter eventually as a beast. Um, yeah, I, I, especially after reading the book, I know there's big differences though. But it was always it, it was a good it was always a good. See, so this this is what this is what um, films from Sci-Fi Channel should do take from you know stuff like this or from other good um, Sci-Fi Channel. Um, well, this didn't appear on Sci-Fi Channel. This, appeared, this was this, this like premiered on um, NBC, but. If it, but if it would premiere on Sci-Fi Channel, this is what a Sci-Fi Channel should be, you know, with decent effects, good, decent amount of uh, cast members. Not all, not today, as now is this horrible, horrendous CG with characters you don't care about at all. <laughs> but on the back from New from the New York Times, entertainingly scary, vivid, and exciting. Well, scary. I always never thought I was never scared by it though, but. <laughs> Nothing for features, just has enough you know, scene selection is because there's no features on this. The whole thing's on for like 176 minutes, like, but the di for the di disc one is part one, disc two is part two. Uh, but although I have all oh, the other hand, like Peter Benchley's Creature with Craig T. Nelson, that's all on one. That's about the same time as this, and this is on that's on one disc. For this is uh, only on two discs. Oh well. But yeah, read the book. It's a good. It's a good book by the late Peter Benchley. I will still um, Jaws. I will, I will still prefer that book more because that's the most popular one that he's ever written. But Peter Benchley. But it's also funny. It's it's, it's it's called Beast. Well, this is called the Beast. I guess I guess it's just want to call Beast instead of the Beast though. But. It's not that big of a difference, so I still prefer. I still like to call it the Beast, which is a, which is kind of a good uh, a, a name for it for the giant squid to call it uh, the Beast 
instead of just calling it the giant squid. But the beast, I thought, was kind of a fitting name for it, because a couple times they mentioned beast instead of giant squid, though, but... Yeah. So that's my review for Peter Benchley's The Beast. I would say it's a... Hmm, well, I would say classic, but I would say it's a good old 90s creature feature film. Just like Deep Rising, all, you know... And I would say it's a good, it's a good old-fashioned creature feature, film, especially from a, a giant. As I would say it's also one of the best films about a giant squid. Well, besides, well, besides, you know, well, two thousand twenty thousand leagues under the sea featured a giant squid, but it was not the whole entire film. This here it was the main focus about how to stop a giant squid. So I've seen, I've seen sci-fi films on giant squid that were not that great. I would say, I would probably say this is the best. I would say this is probably the best film on about a giant squid. So, yeah. And like I said, William Pearson did a really great job. See right there, him right there again. So that's my review for Peter Benchley's The Beast. Thanks for watching, and, and stay tuned on the next movie review. Later.